this final trial is going to span two days. Both of the days, well, we got the first in, in quote unquote investigation of way, but the second day is gonna have investigation again and trial again. And as I've seen, both of those trials involve a lot of to be continued, which means this is probably going to take five years to complete. <sighs> Just so you know, I'm not going to take sides. Message received loud and clear. Good, because I don't like this one bit. You and Daddy should be on the same team. Sorry, Trucy. Wow, she's really mad. Ah, uh, I guess I'm sorry, kind of. I'm just worried things will never be the same between Daddy and Apollo. If they go through with this. Is that all? Well, I wouldn't worry about that. That's the way it is with us men. We may fight, but we don't burn bridges. Actually, we really do. I have burned a lot of bridges. Fuck those people. Really? Nope. Things will never be the same ever again. Blatant lies right now. I sure you hope you're not lying to me. Those darn bridges. Sorry I'm late, Apollo. Athena, there you are. What happened with you and Mr. Wright yesterday? Uh, oh, yeah, about I that. Yeah, I love burning stuff too. I ended up going to the wrong airport. I was waiting there, thinking his flight was really late. And before I knew it, I dozed off. By the time I woke up, it was already dark. I figured something like that had happened. Being late and dozing off are two things you do best. Ugh, guilty as charged. So, then I take it you have no idea what today's case about? Not a clue, sorry. Um, what is today's case about, if I might ask? Another locked room mystery? A suspect with a flimsy alibi? Ooh, or a dying message? Sorry, strike three, you're out. It's a civil case. A civil case? What the fuck is that? <laughs> you act like I'm speaking Swahili here. It's just the right anything agency specializes in criminal law, or so I thought. In civil cases, there are no prosecutors, right? Instead, both parties remain retain an attorney. Right, and the other attorney is someone you know very well. Uh, really? Who? Trial will begin shortly. Please proceed to the courtroom at once. Okay, let's do this. Apollo, wait. Who is the other attorney? Where is Mr. Wright? No time to explain. Let's go. Okay, right behind you. <sighs> it's Mia. <laughs> yeah. Why is it the same judge, though? Shouldn't a judge also, you know, specialize in... Well, whatever. Court is now in session. Oh, uh... Uh, is this some sort of practice session? Mock trial, perhaps? Um, no, it's not, Your Honor. It's the real deal, Your Honor. Hmm, so then you two have had a falling out? I won't have you using my courtroom for that, you know? It's nothing like that, Your Honor. Exactly, just so happens that we have different clients in this case. I see. Well, here's to hoping this has no adverse effect on your working relationship. Say that again? I have no idea we're going up against a boss today. Ugh, you sure this is a good idea, Apollo? What, you want to switch sides? Honestly, I'd rather be anywhere but here right now. Well, at least she is here. I'm really going to need her help. Mr. Justice. What's up? Don't expect me to pull any punches just because you're the opposing lawyer. Fuck. As I said, the kid's gloves are off. Come what may, they'll stay off. Motherfucker. Same here, asshole. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. Phoenix is gonna kick your ass.
Yeesh, you guys are really chomping at the bit, aren't you? Uh, I don't mind to get fight between co-workers. Just keep the civil the case head. civil. Now then, if the plaintiff would take the stand, we may begin. Right, left, right, left, halt! Noble judge, members of the gallery, good day to you, I'm Paul Addison, this is but the start of my epic, epic campaign! You all have the honor of witnessing it! Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, everyone! Today we're gonna play Ace Attorney... Uh, I hate myself. <clears throat> Mr. Addison, what is the crazy contraption you're riding? I hate this douche. It's my custom-made election-winning campaign mobile. Beautiful, isn't it? You are at a witness stand, not a campaign podium. Fucko. Come out there this instant. <laughs> What's up, guys? Remember to dislike and unsubscribe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Also remember to demonetize. All right, now with the plaintiff's attorney, Mr. Wright, please explain the complaint filed against the defendant. Mr. Addison's complaint against the defendant is simple. The defendant, one Dirk Shitmati, stole my client's family heirloom, the crystal of Amifei. Mr. Addison merely seeks its return. This wouldn't have happened if that archeologist hadn't kicked the bucket. I see. Well, Mr. Justice, let's have your opening statement, if you would. Defense asserts the item in question is the Founder's Orb, a sacred relic from Crayon. Hmm, go on. It seems someone asked an archaeologist, Dr. Archie Buff, to study the orb. Dr. Buff determined that it was a Crayonese national treasure known as the Founder's Orb. The very orb that was stolen from a treasure room in Crayon several weeks ago. Why, yes, I saw a news report about that. The theft of a Cranny's national treasure caused quite an uproar in the kingdom. Well, we believe that it was not, in fact, a theft in the traditional sense, but rather that it was spirited out of Crayon by someone for Dr. Buff to study. You don't say, and... Around that time, an acquaintance of the defendant learned of Dr. Buff. He made contact with the doctor who agreed to hand over the orb. Apparently, the doctor wanted nothing to do with it once he'd learned it had been stolen. Hmm. It seems you even have a transfer agreement between both parties. Mr. Shatmadi also agreed to return the Founder's Orb to the Kingdom of Crayon. Once the doctor verified it was the real thing. I see. So this dispute centers on... whether the item in question is the Founder's Orb or the Crystal of Amifei. That, in turn, will determine the object's rightful owner. Maybe it's both, though. I'd better bring my A-game. Going up against Mr. Wright won't be a walk in a park. Hmm. Come to think of it, the name of Dirk Shipmati sounds awfully familiar. But I can't recall where I've heard of it. Oh, uh, it's probably just your imagination, Your Honor. It is just a tourist, after all. Hmm. My imagination, you're saying? Are you sure about this, Apollo? He's a wanted criminal in crayon, isn't he? Crayon, yes. Here, he's just a tourist. Very well, let's begin the proceedings. Bailiff, would you bring in the first witness? <clears throat> Sup, guys? Emma Sky here. Show some manners. We're in court. I know, it's just... This is a civil trial, so I was surprised to see a detective take the stand. I had her do some Ema digging on Dr. Nice Dr. Buff. What for? You disappoint me, Apollo. First, you know I'm not just she a detective. She is here again. I'm a forensic scientist. Time to blow. Do try to remember that. Second, you owe Mr. Wright an apology. After all he's done for you, you have some nerve. First, I'm sorry. And second, I'm really just trying to do my job. You'll never get anywhere with that attitude. 
Take some advice from someone who's been there. Why do I feel like I'm on trial here? Detective Sky, your testimony, if you please. Police have had their eyes on Dr. Buff for some time, and just today, a number of stolen artifacts were discovered in his study. Among them were a priceless urn and a statue that were stolen from the Fae Clan. It seems the doctor would do anything to study artifacts, including steal them. As for the relic at the center of this dispute, he likely stole it from the Adazan residence. Doesn't make any sense. Doctor is a thief? Why am I just hearing about this now? Well, cat burglar isn't something he'd put on his resume. He was more careful than that. The fact is, he was a classic treasure hunter. Treasure hunter, huh? Like people who have thr thrilling adventures in exotic places, risking life and limb for glory. I doubt Dr. Buff was the star of his own hit movie series, Athena. Out well, of respect for the dead, I will say that Dr. Buff wasn't doing, doing it to get rich. Apparently, he only wanted to borrow artifacts to study them. He would then return them as soon as his research was finished. According he to the doctor's the child, of independence. he would even repair or restore some of the artifacts he stole before returning them. He believed he was honoring the dead by discovering their history through artifacts. Whatever lofty ideals he held, it makes no difference. Larceny is larceny. He certainly sounds no different from a regular thief to me. So, let's say for a moment that the doctor really did moonlight in stealing artifacts. Might he not have stolen the Founder's Orb in Crayon and brought it back here himself? Nope, there's no record of him traveling overseas over the past few years. Plus, he couldn't very well leave his reclusive child at home all alone. Mm. And this really must be the Crystal of Army Fay. Yes, he stole it from the Addison residence, probably so he could study it. This is the left hook I did not need. Bet you never saw that coming, Apollo. Yeah, when Mr. Wright said the kid gloves were off, he wasn't kidding. Ha ha ha. Dots. Mr. Justice, you may proceed with your cross-examination. You claim he stole a family heirloom from the Addison re residence, but claiming something doesn't make it true. Unfortunately, it is true. How can he be so sure? A police report was filed concerning the theft, one year ago, in fact. What? A whole year ago? August 25th of last year, to be exact. The report states, and I quote, the crystal of Ami Fei was discovered to be missing. From the Adazan storehouse at 10 a.m., the storehouse lock had been picked. Signed, Paul Addison Wimperson. Well, a year old report certainly lends the plaintiff's claim credence. The doctor could really have stolen the crystal of Ami Fei. Not only that, Your Honor, but the founder's orb was only found to be missing several weeks ago. That is nearly a year after the crystal theft, theft was reported. Those darn lockpickers. Therefore, I believe we must consider the orb and the crystal to be two separate items. Paul Addison Wimperson? Not the most awe-inspiring tear then, does it? I see why he cut it. Not that he inspires confidence without it. Still, I probably do the same in his shoes. Police report was filed about the crystal's theft a year ago. But the theft of the founder's orb was only reported a few weeks ago, so the crystal's police report was filed way before the orb was found missing. 
That suggests the stolen relic is the crystal of Elmi Fay, as Mr. Addison Wimperson asserts. Hmm. I doubt the police report is a fake. After all, Lama is the one who submitted it as evidence. Still, I feel like something we learned in that police report is important somehow. Ah, fuck. God damn it, game. <sighs> Gotta get the emails, man. The doctor stole the relic from the plaintiff. Are you sure? Because that statement Rematch. doesn't agree with a certain piece of evidence. What do you mean? Take a look at this. What about it? This contains an email from the doctor's computer. Email? Not a little piece of plastic. I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, ah. Uh. This stick here can store all sorts of computer data. Still don't get it. Here, just look at this. Apparently, the doctor was reporting his research findings to a certain individual. Now, take a look at this. It's a police report Detective Sky presented to this court. You can see the plaintiff's legal name on it. Paul Addison Wimperson. See why he dropped Whipperson from his name, but that's hardly breaking news. Look closer, Your Honor. Ah, instead his of initials. sending the email file, they took a screenshot with not sender viewable. Yep. The whole internet is in it. Right. The plaintiff's the internet. The plaintiff's full legal name is Paul Addison Whipperson. Now consider this. The email's recipient address starts with three letters. P-A-W? Ah! Don't tell me. Oh, but I will. Anyway, the individual who hired the doctor to study the disputed item is none other than Paul Addison Wimperson. Wait, then that means... Exactly. He wouldn't have asked a man who stole his family heirloom to study it. Therefore, how could this possibly be the Crystal of Ami Fei? We never checked the doctor's emails! Couldn't even figure out the password to his computer. Plaintiff willingly left the orb in the doctor's care so he could study it, at the behest of his benefactor. Wait, and what about the police report? I have all the details of the theft right here. It's probably for another relic, the real crystal of Ami Fei. He's just using the report as a way to claim that our orb is actually his stolen crystal. Objection! And how are you so certain that PAW refers to my client's initials? Maybe the email's recipient was a dog lover. Perhaps. So let's get Come to know now. your client a little Forensic better, shall scientist. we? I doubt the doctor's Mr. Hard drive Paul Addison Wimperson. <laughs> Suppose shutting down detractors is all part of a politician's job. Answer me this, fucker. What is your birthday? My birthday? It's July 11th, but what's it to you? Oh, I see. You can address birthday gifts to my office. Full disclosure. Only accept gifts valued at thousand dollars or more. Hmm? What is your Why birthday? is everyone going silent? Hello, Al. <laughs> How can anyone be that self-centered? Alright, oh, politician. Did everyone hear that? He said July 11th. I wish he had said September 11th, but... I digress. Or rather, 711 matches the numbers in the email address. Both name and birthday are a match. I hardly think that's a coincidence. 
Wait. Are you sneaky little? Looks like someone finally decided to join the conversation. What the plaintiff character explains. I would like to say that is quite... Quite what? Quite a thing you said. Um, any other thoughts? What about 20th April? No further comments. Stand by my previous statement. Hold it! You can't just walk away. Even politicians have to explain themselves in a the court of law. I'm afraid I simply I don't know how it happened. Can't possibly explain matters outside of my purview. Perhaps it was a mistake on the part of my secretary. Oh no, you don't, you slippery eel. Mr. Wright, would you care to respond? I won't argue your assertion. My client lent the treasure in question to the doctor and asked him to study it. It seems that much is a fact. Now we're getting somewhere. However, it has no bearing on the issue of ownership. Ah, uh, so. Mr. Addison, I fully understand your position here. You had to hide the fact that you sent the crystal out to be studied. Your family would have been very upset if they had found out. It's a family heirloom, after all. You've got to be kidding me. Mr. Wright is, well, right, of course. But then, he always is. That's why he's my lawyer. The crystal is a precious Addison family heirloom and has been for centuries. Dr. Buff was so eager to study its proud heritage, I just couldn't say no. I didn't even tell my grandfather. Objection! But in order to win the back, uh, backing of your so-called benefactor, you were going to give what you claimed to be the crystal of Amifade to that person? You were going to give a precious family heirloom away, just like that? I was going to explain everything to grandfather later, honest. My client's grandfather is very proud of his grandson for following in his footsteps. And if refusing him would have meant dashing the dreams of his darling grandson, I doubt he, the kindly old man, could have said no. Phoenix well, is a good opponent. Grandchildren are supposed to be spoiled. That's what grandfathers are for. Your Honor, please. I mean, it's been in the family for centuries. My grandfather thinks highly of my talents as a politician, and that's why he entrusted me with this very important name placard today. <sighs> so I'm sure it would, be, it would have been okay with me using the crystal as I saw fit. I think the judge is buying it, Apollo. No surprise there, he's always going on about his own grandchild after all. Uh, excuse me, can I leave now, Mr. Wright? I believe my work here is done. By all means, Detective Sky, thank you for your assistance. You're welcome. It's nice to testify at a civil trial once in a while. See you around. Bye, Emma. Hmm, seems the facts have changed somewhat. Mr. Addison Wimperson apparently lent his family heirloom to Dr. Buff. Mr. Justice, how would the defense like to proceed? Oh, he was uh, never seen again. All right, now what? Apollo, let's hear what they know about this so-called crystal of Amifei. Maybe we can find some inconsistencies in her statements. Right. Okay then, Mr. Wright. If the item in question really is an Addison family heirloom, then let's hear all your client knows about it. Of course. Mr. Addison Wimperson. Please tell the defense everything you know about the crystal's origin. Alright, now then, listen and learn. This is the tale of the crystal of Amifei, and the illustrious history of the Addison clan. Are you ready? Our story begins back in the old country when the Addison family reigned supreme. My ancestor was praised as a benevolent ruler. He protected his spirit mediums, a minority back then, from the rest of the locals. That doesn't sound right. Pearl just said the opposite. If you recall, some discriminated against him, you see, while others tried to abuse their power. As thanks, Ami Fei gave the crystal she had specially made as a gift to him. 
Oh, maybe back then, I guess, yeah. I'm a descendant of that great lord. As such, my polit politic uh, political power and influence is backed by centuries of history. Well, that devolved into a great load of self-aggrandizing propaganda for us. As you can see, the Crystal of Army Fay is an heirloom of the esteemed House of Addison. And you have proof that it has always been in the Addison family? I have someone who gave a statement to that effect. My client's neighbor, one Ives Shinetto, age 85, gave the following statement. The Addisons showed me the crystal back when I was but a lad. Can we really trust the memory of an old man? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain that statement to the judge? <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't mean... What I'm trying to say is, uh... uh <laughs> never underestimate the memory of your elders. I may forget my verdicts the next day, but the memories of my past are clear as day. <laughs> Therefore, I find Mr. Ives Shinetou's statement to be perfectly credible. Wow, did you see how Mr. Wright got the judge on his side? That's definitely a trick I won't up my sleeve. Uh, you're not helping, Athena. You may cross-examine the witness. Make it snappy. <clears throat> By the way, full disclosure, I'm using a walkthrough because I don't care to waste more time on this, this is than a necessary. Trial. So we're just gonna treat this as a visual novel. All right, that's fair. All right, apparently me too. Objection! Right, because the things match. You stated that Army Fay had the crystal made for your ancestor. So, am I to assume it was made in Japan? That's right, the craftsmanship is unbeatable. Well, that's strange. I don't see how your so-called crystal could have been made there. What are you talking about? Quite obvious if you take a closer look at this. Take a look at the distinctive design here. According to Dr. Buff, it's a Midamon motive dating back to the early days of the Kingdom of Crayon. The Kingdom of Crayon, huh? And you base this on... Here, this piece of evidence, Your Honor. These are the doctor's research notes on the Founder's Orb. This is the box in which the orb was originally stored. It features the same pattern as the one found on the orb. Hmm, they do look like the same pattern. Therefore, I assert that... The Sphere that must have been made in the Kingdom of Crayon. <laughs> My placard! Objection! Crayon channeling technique originated in the Kingdom of Crayon. An army phase is known to have traveled there to train. With that in mind, so what's to say she didn't bring that pattern back with her? Objection! But since this is clearly a Crayonese design, not even you can deny the possibility that it was made there in the Kingdom of Crayon. Objection! Anything's possible to some extent, that doesn't make it true. So you can't conclude that the orb is from Crayons based solely on that pattern. If it were that simple, I could just as easily say it's Japanese. I have to agree with Mr. Wright, the pattern alone proves nothing. But that also means there's no basis to claim the item in dispute was made in Japan either. Hmm. At this rate, we're going nowhere fast. He's right, we're just pitting ourselves. Wonder if you have any evidence that could break this stalemate. Hmm. Evidence that could break this stalemate. 
Oh my god, it does not exist. Doesn't seem to be anything we can use, at least not at this point. Well, unless we can find something, this trial won't be going anywhere. That's much better. That's his deal. I have a suggestion. Why don't we consider this from a different angle? I'm listening. What if... the defined dragons really were authorized to take possession of the relic? Hmm. Afraid I don't know where you're going with this, Mr. Wright. Consider the orb transfer agreement, which states, I agree to hand over the Founder's Orb to the defined dragons if I will come to no harm. What if, as the last part suggests, this was written under duress? What would render the agreement null? Uh, that would render the agreement null and void. What are you suggesting, Mr. Wright? While you were on your little cave expedition, I was investigating Dr. Buff's accident. And there was something you overlooked, Mr. Justice. Namely, that his accident might have actually been murder. I have not overlooked that, in fact, Mr. Wright. The game made me overlook that, but I haven't. I have, in fact, very clearly predicted exactly this happening, and several other things that are most definitely also going to happen. But whatever. Are you suggesting the doctor was murdered? But follow me on this for a sec. <coughs> the books that came tumbling down were from the archaeology shelf. However, among the mountain of books was a single volume of psychology. What's more, there was some blood on it. And you feel this is important because... The books that came tumbling down were from the top shelf. The archaeology books. We know this because the doctor's books were meticulously organized by subject. Archaeology took up the entire shelf, so that psychology book is completely out of place. Don't think of it. The shelves were arranged quite carefully. It's also worth noting that psychology books only take up a tiny part of the bottom shelf. You might wonder why a book on psychology was found amid the pile of archaeology books. But I believe it can explain what that single out-of-place book was doing there. The doctor was struck from behind while selecting a psychology book from the shelf. And that's when the blood got on the book? Precisely. And to make it look like an accident, he was buried under a mountain of archaeology books. Wait a second, this is all just speculation, right? Or do you have proof that it was murder? Of course I do. You do? On a hunch, I had Detective Sky examine the doctor's head wound. He found that he'd been struck by the corner of some object or another. Wait, what? A wound like that couldn't have resulted from a fall to the floor, you know? Yeah, but the book could have been lying there. Do you understand what this means, Mr. Justice? The wound makes it crystal clear that Dr. Buff was murdered. Of course. Well, that was expected. Everyone would have thought we'd break out of the same way like this. I put the ladder right out uh, under under us. Um, he put it there because this is what we expected to happen. Even if the cause of death was murdered, what makes you think it was the Defiant Dragons? You should know better than to hurl baseless accusations. Did you forget who you're up against, asshole? You didn't actually think I'd come to court without witnesses and evidence, did you? What are you talking about? I would like to request further testimony from the plaintiff. Specifically, I would like the court to hear how he saw one of the rebels leaving the crime scene. So what? If you can prove it was murder, that's the end of our client's right to the orb. Did he have this up his sleeve the whole time? Yes. Uh. Trial is taking another unexpected turn, and my room is starting to boil me. 
alive. So I'm going to take a quick break to open the windows. Though I don't know. Eh, it's a bit cooler outside. Let's see how this is going to go. Ah. But I must mention, Mr. Wright, that you have yet to identify the murder weapon. The ob object used to commit the murder was not located at the scene of the crime. The murderer likely disposed of it elsewhere. Well, I never thought we'd be deliberating the issue of a murder at the civil trial. All right, Mr. Addison Wimperson, your testimony. Heh, <laughs> perhaps me dazzled. Spoider, moider. That evening, I was walking alone, lost Spoiler, in thought. Moida. I had passed by the doctor's house, and that's when I saw Mr. Arribal. He was running out of the front door. It was around 10 at night. Surely that must have been him fleeing to the scene of his crime. Okay, so we have to prove that the doctor was out of the house, so that couldn't be true. And well, for me, is well for the end of such violence. So the plaintiff saw a possible suspect fleeing from the doctor's residence. It was within the window of the estimated time of death. What in the world were you doing there, then? No, we know the doctor was out, like, at midnight or whatever to bury the thingy, right? Because of Pearl's testimony, but whatever. There's evidence he was in the doctor's study as well. Isn't that right, Mr. Justice? Yeah, you mean the suitcase? Exactly. He must have been in quite a rush to leave that behind. Oh, and by the way, Your Honor, Mr. Arribal just so happens to be sitting in the gallery today. Ah! See? That's him trying to escape as we speak. People tend to have really bad memory in this game. Mm-hmm. It's a method to make the player appear smarter if they don't also notice that the writers are doing it on purpose. Alright, the counsel slash defense may question the plaintiff slash witness once more. <clears throat> Please proceed, Mr. Justice. Where exactly were you when you saw Mr. Arribal? Right here, under this tree. I saw him dashing out of Dr. Buff's front door. And he didn't notice you? No, I was hidden by the tree. Is it really all that important to know where the plaintiff saw Mr. Arribal? Yes. Believe it matters a lot. I ask that it please be added to the witness testimony. Hold it. Did you notice anything unusual? Yes, his behavior was incredibly suspicious. His eyes were darting all around as he ran off in total panic. As soon as I saw that, I knew he had done something, and it probably wasn't good. Might that, you still didn't report it to the police. Who would have thought you had killed Dr. Buff? Not me, that's why I didn't report him. Well, you were right by the fucking window, asshole. So the witness didn't notify the police. Is that an important statement? Of course it is. Mr. Addison Wimperson, rather than not Mr. Arribal, wasn't there something else that you should have had your undivided should have had your undivided attention? Like what? 
Oh, yes, of course. The politician must also keep his finger on the electorate's pulse and focus on... Sorry, but you're way off. I am? Hmm. Would you care to explain, Mr. Justice? If the witness saw Mr. Harbaugh from his position here, then he should have also been able to see the doctor's body. After all, it was right next to a huge window. Of course, with the body that clearly visible to the witness, it's unthinkable that he wouldn't have reported it to the police. Hmm, would the witness care to respond? Did he fall asleep? Um, Mr. Addison Wimperson? Mr. Addison Wimperson! Oh. Oh, um, mm, there are many sides to any issue. Did I ever do to deserve this? In any case, I'd like the court to acknowledge the inconsistency in the witness's testimony. Mr. Addison Wimperson, did you really see Mr. Arbal? Yes. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? Oh, I thought I'd return to my seat seeing as I'd already answered the question. This isn't some small town hall debate, so you just stay right there until I say we're through. I have to run that by my campaign manager before I... Mr. Addison Wimperson, I think it's time for you to come clean. Huh? So then, does this mean he didn't see Mr. Arribal? As your lawyer, Mr. Addison Wimperson, I advise you to divulge that matter we discussed. Silence is no longer an option. Uh, are you sure about this? I'm in the midst of running for office. I can't afford to let any strange rumors get out. Don't worry, you won't suffer any blowback for what you're about to reveal. Blowback? I'm not sure I like the sound of that, Mr. Wright. Not to worry, Your Honor. Nothing untoward will come with this, I promise. Now then, Mr. Justice. Remember how it was an anonymous caller that reported the doctor's death? Come to think of it. Yes, I know what we remember. Thank you, game. That's exactly what I'm saying. The anonymous, the anonymous source who con contacted the police after discovering the body was... My client, Mr. Paul Addison Winterson. What? I won't say. So you see, he played his part as a concerned citizen, quite admirably, if I may say so. Isn't that right? Yes, indeed. In your society today, in our society today, there are too many who choose indifference over righteous action. Also called this way up front. I was sure it was this guy. And eh, whatever. There was no other reason for the game otherwise to pull this stunt of, you know, saying that the, the reporter was anonymous, whatever. Was there someone else at the scene of the crime when my client discovered the body? Um, you mean Mr. Arbal? You have been leaving a doctor's house right about then. Wait. And that means... Yes, it does. In short, what my client witnessed was Mr. Arbal fleeing the scene of a heinous murder. Heinous murder. And that's not all, based on what we've heard so far. Mr. Arbal looked exceedingly suspicious, and that's putting it mildly. You already know that the fine dragons threatened the doctor with bodily harm. Wait, do we know that? Now that they've killed him, the so-called orb transfer agreement is null and void. But that doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? Like that goes directly against... 
whatever. <clears throat> what sort of evidence do you have? Can you actually prove that it was Mr. Arbol who killed the doctor? The move had desperate written all over it. All I've got... Evidence? I suppose it's true that I don't have any. But I do have another witness. You do? You should know I always come fully prepared. My new witness will provide testimony proving Mr. Arbol's guilt. Very well, Bailiff. The politicians are just too intelligent for us to comprehend. Like both sides, use this time to prepare properly. Wow, new Mr. Wright will put up a tough fight, but. Yeah, just when I thought we'd had him, he turned the table on us as expected. He really is expected. We can't let him do the expected again. Looks like they've got me again. Three times in one year, and that's a new record. That's please, no more new records or bad puns while you're at it. It's hard enough trying to help you out as it is. Roger that. I'll be more careful next time. Daz, this was Mr. is what Mr. Wright said, too. Did you really pay a visit to Dr. Buff that night? Sure did. Can't remember the exact time, though. All I know is it wouldn't hand over the orb. Someone put it in his head that we rebels were dangerous. That's why he threw me out. So the doctor was still alive when La Daz last saw him. Still have to prove it, though. Better brace yourself, son. Eh, where's Trucy? She went to go see her dad. Hmm, maybe she's still mad. More like worried. I'm worried that this trial will create a rift between you two. That you might then leave the agency. Her saying rift just made me think of, of that one Mega 64 sketch. Hold on for a sec. Which one? This one. I'm just, you know, testing out the old Oculus Rift. <laughs> What's the Oculus? Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, shit. Right, you said you had a witness. Your Honor, I would like to call the lone survivor of the doctor's murder to stand. Wait, he can't mean that the Sarge is here? You mean Dr. Buff's reclusive son? How did you get him to cooperate? Nothing a little persuasion couldn't handle. The poor child only agreed to help if it meant catching the killer. Getting a kid like that to come overcome his fear? Now that's impressive. It's gonna be the drone again. Very well, Mr. Wright, please call your witness to the stand.
Yep. Oh my. Sergeant Puff at your service, sir. He's here as the drone? Really? Um, Mr. Wright, what exactly is the meaning of this? Past trauma has rendered it impossible for the witness to venture into public. Leaving home was hard enough, and it seems leaving the witness lobby was just too much. But I would still like to continue with the testimony delivered by this drone. AKA, we could not bear to render another fucking model of the kit, so we just didn't. Understand it must be terrible to lose one's father like that, but testimony via remote control oh toy. Oh boy, now we get to give psychiatric therapy to the grandchild. Well, let's take things for a spin and see how he goes. <laughs> Just who's calling this trial anyway? I want to eat some chocolate, so read the text for yourselves. Objection. Right, you backstabbing no good. I didn't kill no one. Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay. Yeah, well, whatever. Objection! Are you hiding something from me? Sorry, but I'm afraid lawyers are missile proof. What? It's simple, Your Honor. Just as he's able to see what is happening in court right now, Sarge was able to see what was happening in the study then. With his cherished drone, of course. Ah, now that you mention it. And to think the answer is right before our eyes this whole time. Sarge, you were perfectly capable of patrolling the study that night. So you must have been seeing something. seen such fearsome ordinance. <clears throat> Tell it to us straight, Sarge. After all, you want to help your father, don't you? That fucking helicopter sound is definitely not getting on my nerves at all. 
Tell us what you saw that night. I didn't see anything, I swear. You sure? You seem awfully stressed for someone who didn't see anything. They have acquired a truth bomb. Hern, we need to get one of those as well. Sarge, you need to answer my question. Shut the fuck up! It'll be a scorching day in Siberia before a lowly private like you orders me around. It's with them in Siberia of all places. Fit, but if a scorching day is what it'll take, it'll take them. Maybe it's time to turn up the heat. Hey, get on with it. Get on with it, I said. Really fond of her gimmicks. Get on with it. Get on with it! That's strange. You reacted with shock when you discovered your father's body, yet you weren't nearly as shocked then as when you saw Mr. Arribal. Normally, you'd expect the death of one's father to be much more impactful. That is strange. I wonder what it could mean. Well, we know he wasn't affected by his father's death as he should have been. Then I think you know why. Sarge, you weren't as shocked at seeing your father's body at seeing Miss Arbal because... Sarge, maybe the truth is you left your room that night, and that's when you saw it, your father's body. Really? You didn't see his body? Alright then. What did you see? Uh... George, please tell us what you saw. Uh, but uh, no more when I saw it. Oh, I couldn't bear it. Couldn't stand to lose yet another loved one. Huh? Am I missing something here? Is that why you weren't very shocked when you found out your father was dead? Because he had already sensed that he was a goner somehow? <laughs> Maybe. Please, Sarge, what was it you saw on the night of your father's mood? Uh, ah. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I've confiscated your little toy. Battlefield has no place for unauthorized equipment. Witcher! Follow, I can't continue the session without him. Calm yourself to sentence and witness. Hereby order you to submit to your therapy session. What in blazes? Look at me, I'm judge, jury, and executioner now. If you're convened a military tribunal. Whoa, whoa, this has gone way too far. Bailiff, arrest that throne this instant. This is fucking stupid. Man, this is some great action we're seeing right here. All this widescreen makes you really feel it. What was that saying? Show don't tell? Yeah, I think. I've probably never heard of that. <sighs> Finally got him back. Nice work. I really enjoyed not seeing that. I want you to take a few deep breaths. Just try to relax. Try it with me. Breathe in. They blew the budget on the dance animation for the princess. Don't breathe out. Just only breathe in. You'll be fine. Trust me. You'll 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 be fine. And, and now he's dead. Thank you, everyone. That's the least relaxing breathing exercise I've ever seen. That's it! Charge, you were overcome with shock and fear when you saw those flames, weren't you? Was I? Yes, just six months ago, you and your mother were caught up in an arsonist's blaze, so it's no wonder you would be extremely scared of a fire. That does make sense. Well, maybe, just maybe, your subconscious fear of fire was what caused you to withdraw from the world. What do you mean, corpse woman? In the outside world, you were bound to come across all sorts of fire. Candles, cigarettes, hell, even the grill and a diner. Even if it's not that often, just the idea that you might see them grew bigger and bigger until you couldn't shut it out. <clears throat> Candles, cigarettes, just think about them since I chilled out my spine. Wow, things I take for granted. Now I see I was afraid of the fire. Strange, I didn't even realize it myself. About that fire, Sarge, can you tell me what it was burning? Just stay calm and maybe something will come to you. Oh, um... Oh, starting to remember. It was... 
It was that relic. That relic Papa was studying. It was on fire. The orb was on fire? Mm-hmm. Still kind of fuzzy. But yeah, the orb was burning right in front of me. Or Papa, whatever. And there in the flames was... Mama? Yes, now I remember. I saw Mama Pyramid dancing flames. Wait, what? What's going on here? Maybe it's a memory from the fire that killed his mother. Hmm, he might be confusing it with what really happened when his father died. So let me guess, more therapy? Yep. Speaking of fires, it looks like someone's barbecuing outside. It smells really good. Objection! Don't blame yourself, Sarge. After all, even if you hadn't passed out, the outcome would have been the same. What do you mean? I'm talking about the time of death. Your father wasn't killed right after you left your room. What? Explain yourself at once. You said you saw your father burning in the orb, right? But that night she went out to hide it in a cave. Finally we're getting to this. So what she saw, Sarge, was something that happened before your father left to hide the orb. So you see, you didn't pass out right before he was killed. You passed out right before he left for the cave to hide the orb in the ruins within. So, even if I hadn't passed out... That's right, the outcome would have been exactly the same. That's because your father, Dr. Buff, was killed after he returned from the ruins. And therefore, Sarge, there is no need for you to blame yourself. Oh, I see. really say I bear no blame in this? Why do you ask? Because the truth is, if I hadn't engaged in my siege defense, Papa would still be alive. Papa wished nothing more than for me to lead, lead a happy, healthy life. That's why he quit his job and moved us out, away from the big city. But even then, I didn't have the courage to set foot into the outside world. And in the end... I failed to make Papa's wish come true. God, it smells so good. I wanna eat some meat now. Um, Sarge? If you want to make your father's wish come true, if that's what you really want, then who's to say it's too late? Why don't you take the first step now? First step? That's right. You can cast off all your regret. You can stop standing still and start moving forward. I know from experience, I know what it's like to feel like you do, but only you, only you can decide to take that first step. If you don't change your tactics now, Sarge, the victory you seek in the war you're waging will always lie beyond your grasp. Hmm. I think I understand now. Also, I feel like this game is really fucking... 
uh, enjoying making these dots appear. I don't remember the previous games having this many fucking dots in them. Like, I've always had many, but not this excessively. I made up my mind. As of this moment, I will suspend my teacher defense indefinitely. Okay. Are we gonna see the actual thing now? Oh wow! All right. I thought they wouldn't actually make a model. This but game whatever. is much more sad than the other games, so it needs more dots. Does it? The other game had like fucking Apollo's backstory where he was all fucking stuff or something. I don't know. Where he was all edgy and whatever. Huh? Sergeant Buff reporting for duty. What? I thought they said daughter, and now she's a daughter. Wow, what a surprise. I was just not as shocked because he said daughter. <sighs> so, have you always been in a wheelchair, Sarge? Nope, only since I was injured. In the fire. Um, your voice sounds awfully different from before. My drone features a voice modulation device. It's just one of my army's many technological marvels. Well, you fooled me. I thought some 20 something mil military fanatic was at the controls. All the same to you, troops. I'd like to continue my testimony. Just remembered something. It says crisp and clear as a trumpet at roll call. What did you remember? It wasn't my mother who appeared in the burning orb. It was some lady papa that showed me a picture of a long time ago. He said it was. the Holy Mother, the founder of crayonism. She appeared right there. Right in the burning orb! Oh, so that's how. She bestows indefinite life by showing her face, and then if you know her name, you can spare channel her. And it's like, uh, <sighs> what you say? Holy mother was in the orb. What does that even mean? I have a bad feeling about this. Could it be? Could this explain what Sarge means by the holy mother appearing in the burning orb? Doctor Buff's research notes. What do I have to do with this? Look at this! The burning orb, the appearance of the founder, and this part points to both. Ah. Take that! There's a legend about the orb involving a mysterious riddle, and this song in turn is said to contain the key to solving it. If the legend is true, then I believe the answer lies in this part of the song. Offer thy prayers as firm and as fire, only then shall the Holy Mother return. Well, anyone see where I'm going with this? Prayers as firm as fire. You're supposed to set the orb on fire? A whole stanza seems to suggest that the founder will appear if the orb is set on fire. Wait, so the doctor, he... Yes, Athena. He had solved the ancient riddle of the founder's orb. Oh my! Papa was a great archaeologist, so I believe in him. And I want to believe... I want to believe you achieved his long time dream of solving that riddle before he died. Well, we won't know for sure, until we try it for ourselves. Yes, do it private. Please. I want to see what Papa was searching for with my own eyes. Objection! The, uh, plaintiff was objected if... Objection! Plaintiff will stand down and be Objection! quiet. 
you don't have the right to set a precious relic like that on fire. Oh, but I do. All I needed was Sarge's permission. Since we still don't know if this treasure is the Founder's Orb or the Crystal of Omifei, any ownership rights to Dr. Hat now belongs to his daughter. Therefore, you have absolutely no right to stop us. Very well, Mr. Justice. Never thought I'd be able to I'd be saying this, but you may burn the evidence. <laughs> nice. Alright, here we go. They even made a custom animation for this. Amazing. Look! Apollo, the inside of the orb. It's melting. There's something in there. Hey, it's her face as I predicted. Told you. Ah! Dirk, isn't she? The garb leaves no room for doubt. The founder herself. Face and all. And now everyone's cursed. I don't understand. Yeah, this is good music. Very Japanese. Of course I call it, because this is the only thing this could lead up to. Sorry, Miss Wright, but as you can see, the issue is crystal clear. This figure is the Holy Mother, founder of Crayonism. And based on that, this must be none other than the Founders. Objection! Be that as it may, Mr. Arbal still may have killed the Doctor. If so, it would render the Orb Transfer Agreement null and void, and here's this part. Don't play dumb, Mr. Wright. The truth of the matter has already been proven. If the buff wasn't killed right after Sarge saw Mr. Arbal, it happened after the Doctor came back from hiding the Orb. And you know, you've no proof that Mr. Arbal was still around at the time. Ugh. You claim that the de defined dragons were behind the crime doesn't hold water. And that means the orb transfer agreement is still perfectly valid. Admit it, Mr. Wright. It j I just burned your whole case to the ground. Ugh. No, you haven't won. This is right, but you can't respawn. Respawn? Um. Wait, did we just win? No. Mr. Addison Wimperson, I think it's time for your concession speech. I've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the Founder's Orb. Facts don't lie, but you obviously do. How's that for a campaign slogan? Why, a contemptuous peasant? Hmm. I think this is a good time to wrap up this trial. If both parties have no further objections, I'll render my verdict. No objections here, Your Honor. Um. No. You can't do this. The crystal is mine! I'll lose the election if I lose that crystal. Sorry, but there's really nothing more I can do. You haven't forgotten about our little chat, have you? What's going on here? Objection! Your Honor, I object to the defense's last claim. What? I don't believe they have truly proven that the relic is indeed the founder's orb. Mr. Wright, I don't think even you could bluff your way out of this one. What possible argument could you have to claim that this isn't the Founder's Orb? Um, about that. Oh, of course. He can't possibly have hit on something. Defense's assertion is incomplete, and this is why. 
The defense is basing their claim that this relic is the Founder's Orb on a legend, and that legend claims the Founder will return when the riddle is solved at last. Right, and that's what happened. The Founder was revealed for all to see. But Mr. Justice, what about the rest of the legend? Huh? According to the legend, once the Founder returned, she would bestow spiritual power onto the person who solved the riddle. You're kidding, right? Well, Mr. Justice, do you feel great spiritual power coursing through your veins? Um, yes, I do, if I could spare channel, but I can't. Uh, this game is fucking me up. Maybe so, but you're the one basing your claim on said legend. And what we saw here doesn't fully fulfill it, does it? No, but... Conse consequently, I cannot rightfully claim that this is the Founder's Orb. But the evidence points clearly towards it, so whatever. What's gotten into him? Why is Mr. Wright doing this? Hmm, it would appear that Mr. Wright has lost a few of his marbles. That couldn't be further from the truth, Your Honor. In any case, I believe this is a good time for a recess. Both sides will have 20 minutes to prepare. I'll set all arguments be ready by then. Oh, Mr. Wright, you'd do well to wash up and find your missing marbles by then, too. This is going to take four fucking ever. Mr. Wright is sure acting funny. I mean, he's famous for going out on a limb, but that last assertion was just plain crazy. It's either a bluff or a Hail Mary. Either way, it doesn't make much sense. Maybe there's something we're missing here. Although, he seemed perfectly normal when we spoke earlier. Apollo, I have a bad feeling about this. I'm going to go check up on him. What's going on with you, Mr. Bright? Hey, Private Justice. Oh, what's up? I forgot to mention something. Uh, on the night of Papa's murder, a strange thing happened. Oh, but why are you only telling me about it now? Well, I didn't say anything before because I thought Papa's death was an accident. But now that we know otherwise, I figured it might be important. Oh, more? When I left my room and lost consciousness, I passed out right here. That's right above the coffee bar. Mm-hmm. But when I came to... Someone was pushing my wheelchair. What? I was so scared I beat my uh, hot, hasty retreat as fast as my wheels could take me. You know who it was? No, it was pitch black. Plus, I fled to my room so fast it, I didn't even have a chance to turn on the lights. It was for your father. No, he would have said something to me. Besides, I'd have known if it was him. So then, it could have been... Your father's real killer? I thought exactly. You didn't report this to the police? It, it didn't even occur to me. It's okay, you were obviously still upset, so don't beat yourself up over it. Apollo, this could be really important information. I think the act of pushing Sarge's wheelchair could be part of some bigger scheme. It's hard to see why else the killer would have done such a thing. I guess I should evidence that. Oh, welcome back, Athena. Hmm? What's with the long face? How'd it go with Mr. Wright? What should I... Athena? Oops, sorry. Don't out there for a sec. The recess is almost over, so let's go, uh, uh... What is that all about? It's gonna be some stupid shit about the dude threatening Mr. Bright and whatever, and if, you know.
It's probably something about Maya or whatever. I don't know. Don't care too much either. Uh, Cordoba is once again back in session. And now, uh, Mr. Wright, about the last objection you raised. Either plaintiff still believe that the defense has yet to sufficiently prove its case. He claimed that according to legends, the founder's orb was, would bestow spiritual, spiritual blah, blah, blah. Yet the relic in question has failed to do so, therefore it has failed its own test. I see. Sticking with that ridiculous argument. Furthermore, even if this is the founder's orb, it can't be awarded to the divine dragons. After all, they were the ones who killed Dr. Bob. What are you talking about? That was already proven to be false. There are no grounds for asserting that the fine dragons murdered the doctor. Oh, but I'm afraid there are, Mr. Justice. Your Honor, I would like to present new testimony to this court. Testimony well showed that Daz Arbald did in fact kill Dr. Buff. What? Very well, let me call your witness. Yes, Mr. Wright found another new angle. A new testament could be there for this late in the game. I mean, late. There's, it's only the first day, you asshole. There's a whole nother fucking thing. It is I, the asshat. Jeez, not him again. My client divulged new information to me during the recess. He remembered something he saw, you see. Something crucial to this case. How oh, very convenient. It was around 11 at night, and I was out on a mobile meet and creek around the village. That's when I saw Dr. Buff getting murdered from outside his study window. Mr. Arbal snuck up from behind and struck him on the head. His weapon of choice, his suitcase. Big, strong man like him could easily swing a heavy suitcase into someone's head. You saw the murder as it happened? You're just telling us now because... I saved the best for last tactic known. Murder weapon was a complete mystery, but my client's eyewitness account has finally brought it into the light. Eyewitness testimony isn't the same as hard evidence. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. What's that supposed to mean? We have physical evidence too. A luminol test revealed. A doctor's blood on Mr. Arribal's suitcase. Oh, really? How does that prove Mr. Arribal used it as a weapon? Objection! You should know the answer to that, Mr. Justice. Since you know as well as I that the suitcase is covered in his fingerprints. Yeah, but that doesn't prove him. He did it, because someone with gloves could have done that. Whatever. <laughs> hmm, this is quite convincing testimony and evidence. Nevertheless, you may proceed with your cross-examination. I still don't see how this is relevant to the case, because we've proven that it is not the crystal thingy. So even if the dragons did murder him and won't receive the orb, in that case it just sticks with uh, the actual owner, which is the Crayonese country, and so we should deliver it back, which is what the dragons wanted to do anyway. So that, like, this is completely adjacent to the actual trial at hand, and Eh, whatever. Like, it's completely irrelevant to the debate of the actual civil case trial. It was around 11 at night and was out on a mobile meet and greet in the village. Got to solve the murder, I guess. Yeah, but, like, I get this is a video game and I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to do a thing 
where we solve everything in the last trial, like resolve all the plot points through one convoluted bullshit trial. But if we're supposed to take this in any way seriously as an actual court case, defense could just claim this is completely like pointless and besides the point irrelevant and then it will be done the trial will be won because this is not a murder trial you would have to file that separately and even if you did that there's no point for Addison to do that because he doesn't gain anything by winning that trial so whatever anyway what it's just, fuck it <sighs> He snuck up from behind, so you're saying the doctor never even realized Mr. Arval was there. That's right. He was utterly absorbed in the book. I see. What did you see Mr. Arval do next? He climbed up the bookshelf ladder and dumped a bunch of books down on the body. I believe he was trying to make it look like an accident. But that idiot didn't realize I could see everything from outside the window. The doctor was reading a book at the time of the murder. That's vital testimony. Very well, do it. Fuck them up with the shelves. Where are they? Is, is that supposed to be this or not? I guess not. Oh wait, reading glasses though. Objection! Ah, uh, well, whatever. <laughs> Doctor was standing in front of the bookshelves, absorbed in a book, you say? That seems, but it seems your testimony is completely unreliable. That's quite a bold statement. Well, let's hear you back it up. It would be my pleasure. Lately, it seems the doctor's eyes had gotten so bad he needed reading glasses. However, his reading glasses were over on his desk. So you see, there's no way he could have been reading in front of the bookshelves. I'm sorry, Mr. Addison Wimperson, but I'm going to have to ask you to explain this discrepancy to the voting public. You what? I'll explain it, you lowly cur. I simply made a mistake, you see. The doctor was actually st sitting at his desk when Mr. Arbal hit him over the head. Then the doctor would have been facing him. Surely he would have seen him and tried to run. Dr. Buzz wa Buff was nodding off. You could tell because his eyes were closed and he wasn't moving. Sounds more like what you would do. <sighs> and how do you explain the fact that he was struck in the back of the head? It's not something that should be pos impossible from the front of the desk. Oh, um, about that. He bowed his head when he nodded off. That's when he was clobbered. Hmm. So that's what you saw. Well, Mr. Justice, that sounds like a perfectly reasonable explanation to me. You have a problem with the proposal that Dr. Struck nodding off? Yes. There is a problem. A very big problem. The witness' statement doesn't hold up under the slightest bit of scrutiny. Is that so? Then back it up, asshole. Sure, man. Diagram of the study. Mr. Addison Wimperson allegedly viewed the murder from here. And the doctor was allegedly nodding off here. But from this vantage point, the bookcase would have blocked the witness's line of sight. Well, yes, I believe you're right. But ah! Uh... Objection! 
Fact remains, my client knew that the suitcase was a murder weapon. So he definitely has first-hand knowledge of the crime scene. I'm afraid I have to agree with you there, Mr. Wright. But then we have to ask ourselves, from what vantage point did he see the murder? What are you insinuating, Mr. Justice? From what vantage point could Mr. Addison Wimperson have seen the dozing doctor? Once we determine that, I believe we'll finally see the truth behind this incident. Yay. Got to be kidding, but that's... It is indeed, but everything only makes sense if the witness was there in the study. It's like to study, but that's the scene of the crime. I know, Mr. Addison Wimperson, the man who claims to be a witness to the murder, was most certainly in that very room. Well, are you suggesting? Mr. Addison Wimperson, weren't you the one who actually swung that suitcase? What are you proposing is ludicrous. My client is a small, thin man, whereas Mr. Arbal has a muscular shirt to pull it off. He has a point. That's right. He's the only one who could have lifted such a heavy object. Now do you understand? That rebel does Arbal is the doctor's killer. Anybody could have fucking smeared blood onto the edge of a suitcase. As long as the suitcase is the murder weapon, the suspicion falls entirely on Daz. You have to poke a hole in Mr. Wright's argument somehow, Apollo. Oh, I will. I'm his own technique, no less. If Mr. Addison Whipperson couldn't swing the suitcase around, we'll just have to consider another way he could have used it as a murder weapon instead. Or not. I'm going to turn this case on its head, Mr. Wright, just like you taught me. You talk big, Mr. Justice. You have what it takes. Oh, this should be interesting. Mr. Addison Whipperson's testimony has been filled with one inaccuracy after another. First he stated that Dr. Buff was in front of the bookshelves. Now he claims that the doctor was sitting at this desk. So where was the victim really when he was killed? Also, where was his killer and how was the murder weapon really used? So the important thing here is the position of the victim and the killer relative to each other. Yes, Your Honor, if they were positioned in a certain way, it would be possible to use the suitcase as a weapon without lifting a finger. You can't mean... I would ask the court to recall the study's layout. It's quite distinctive, as you can see. Now, if Dr. Buff was sitting in a certain spot and his killer was at a certain other spot, the suitcase would become a weapon anyone could use. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Justice. Where was Dr. Buff's killer at the time of the crime? Take that! Up here. There? Oh, that's... This should wrap things up nice and pretty for you, Mr. Wright. I would ask the court to recall the study's layout. But this time, instead of thinking in two dimensions... Let's think in three. Only then we can clearly see the killer's method at work. The killer didn't have to swing the suitcase. If he used gravity to his advantage, that is. That's right. If, the, if it was the plaintiff, one Paul Addison Wimperson, who used the suitcase, who pushed it from the second floor, and sent it hurling down onto Dr. Buff, who was sitting at the coffee bar. The psychology book he had, had been at the coffee beer bar, no doubt. The doctor must have set it down there after he'd have finished reading it, or the like. But his blood got onto it, which is why the killer thought to hide it in that mountain of books. Objection! That's quite an entertaining theory you have there, Mr. Justice. There's no evidence that the murder took place at the coffee bar. Not so sure about that, Mr. Wright. Say the evidence of mm, the murder occurring at the coffee bar does exist. 
It's a coffee stain. This brown stain was determined to be coffee. What's more, it was still a bit damp when we saw it yesterday morning. One look at this book speaks volumes, I'm afraid, Mr. Wright. It tells us the doctor was having a cup of coffee at the coffee bar. That's when, he, when the suitcase came hurtling down, striking him on the head. Causing both his blood and his coffee to splatter onto it. Well, Mr. Addison Whipperson. What up, could I possibly have? Well, the doctor never returned your crystal to you, did he? Instead, he hid it in the cave ruins. You've got him now. Telling him that the Defiant Dragons were a dangerous bunch was a huge blunder. All it did was make him hide the orb. You like him back to bite you in the head. Uh, in the end. Even worse, the doctor saw the news reports, so he knew the relic was the founder's orb. Being the conscientious, conscientious researcher he was, he knew he had to return it to its rightful place. And that meant keeping it out of your hands. You were so angry that he refused to return the relic to you. And you killed him with your own hands, isn't that right? Apollo, don't, please don't accuse my client of murder. Huh? What do you mean, don't accuse him? Why would I even say that, Mr. Wright? Uh, what I meant was, um, he's a promising politician with a bright future ahead of him. It's in our nation's best interest to avoid burning him with the taint of a scandal. Say what? Right, you better do something to change the current courtroom climate, or I'll be charged with murder. And you know what will happen to her if that happens. Yes, he. Uh, told you. What's he talking about? Well, I can ponder that later. For now, Mr. Wright, you can't possibly believe that Mr. Arbal is the killer. Are you really going to send an innocent man to prison? I thought you were better than that. Uh, um, well, Mr. Wright, answer me. Um, Mr. Wright, what in the world's going on here? If you won't say so anything, where is then... Meyer anyways? She's kidnapped, as usual. Follow wait. Uh, you too, Athena. Um, it's just, uh, wasn't sure whether I should say anything, but during that last recess when I went to check on Mr. Wright, I overheard something I shouldn't have. I trust my eyes on her. There you go. See, I call it. Can't really say, but just remember, if I'm arrested or fail to obtain the treasure, there will be consequences. Consequences of the worst kind, if you catch my drift. Man, sure wish these games were less predictable nowadays. I remember a time when I was actually surprised by plot twists. <sighs> Maya? As in Maya Fey? Yes, the boss's legendary former assistant. Miss Faye's being held hostage? So it seems. Why didn't you tell me as soon as you heard this? Sorry, it's just Mr. Wright spotted me before I could slip away. He made me promise not to tell you. That it would make things more difficult if you found out. As if things weren't already hard enough. 
So that's why Mr. Wright was acting so strange. I had no idea. This must have been excruciating for him. I think justice has got to be something working, dog. Mr. Justice, about that last statement of yours, I believe you were in the middle of accusing the plaintiff of murdering Dr. Buff. Would you care to continue? Ah, I... Ah, I'm sorry, Paula, I'm really, really sorry. What's gone into you two? I mean... Why not make th everything public? Whatever. Look, use that slime bag and put Miss Faye's little life in jeopardy. It seems you've finally caught on. I'm far too important to be accused of murder. After all, our nation's future rests squarely on my shoulders. I'd rather give up or... Once I present the crystal to my patron, my victory is assured, and one day I'll become president. And then king! I have every politician at my command. Now retract your accusation. I can't... Cow... 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 Tow him? What? Well, if they go public, Maya will be dead. No. Yeah, but... The point is... Then at least they can do a police search, and if they do go through with his threats, he doesn't have any obligation to release Maya. That's the point <laughs> of hostage situations. If there's no reason to believe that the hostage takers are actually going to release the hostage, then there's no choice but to go public with it. <laughs> it's just, you know. Defense would would like to retract the previous accusation. That's true. Follow. Dirk, I don't know what's going on here, but a lawyer should never look the way you do right now. With the feet and resignation written all over your face. A dragon never yields. This is unbelievably lame. It's up to me to do what must be done by me to save the day. Thanks for that, bro. Uh, there's a will, there's a way I'm going to find the way to save Miss Faye and see that justice is served. Here we go for the obligatory thingy. That scumbag is holding Miss Faye hostage to ensure against the Orc for his patron. Seems that patron believes in the Orc's legend. The thing is, the founder did appear when the Orc was exposed to fire, just as the legend said. If the legend is true, then we've already solved the riddle, right? Nope. The legend says the founder will bestow great spiritual power when she returns, but if that's true, it means we haven't solved the whole riddle yet. But how can it be? Are we missing something? Like maybe. Maybe the part about the founder returning should be taken literally. Ah, here we go, game. Thank you for finally catching up with me. Sort of. Is a way for the dead to return spirit channeling. Of course, you'd have known what the fun looks Clearly like it's first. Cloning. But Yorva's revealer faced us, so what if it's a sign that we should channel her? 
Here we go, pearls. In the facts in soft riddle and receive the final problem and need a spirit medium. Ah, oh, game. That was so hard to figure out. I can't believe it. <sighs> Everything's what an incredible going to be twist. okay, Mr. Wright. Because Mr. Paul Addison Whipperson can't afford to harm a hair in Miss Faye's head. Huh? Mr. Addison Wemperson, it seems you've chosen the wrong person to take hostage. Or you mean your patron seeks to solve the orb's riddle, and thereby receive great spiritual power. However, only Maya Fey can truly give them what they really want. You can? What do you mean, only Maya Fey? Think about what the return of the founder really means. We should have considered it more literally. After all, the orb was made in the Kingdom of Crayon, the birthplace of spirit mediums. I think I see now. You need to know what the, uh, what the deceased looks like in order to channel them. But in Crayonism, depicting the face of the founder is taboo. However, her true face was hidden in the orb. So maybe the orb is telling us to try channeling the founder. Exactly. Through a spirit medium, the founder can quite literally return. And if the legend is true, the founder just might bestow spiritual power on someone who she does. Like when Pearls is imbued with Magatama with in, when Pearls imbued my Magatama with spiritual power. If a human could be imbued with such power in a similar manner, it is said the founder possesses immense spiritual power. A great feat would not necessarily be beyond her. Wait a second, and the legend is true? You understand now, Mr. Addison Wimperson. You are holding hostage the final key to unlocking the orb's secret. And if anything were to happen to her, the riddle would remain unsolved forever. Except there's also pearls and also the Queen of Crayon, but whatever. There's always Pearly Fay. I could simply ask her to help. If she wants money, I have plenty to offer. Did you just fucking openly admit to kidnapping Maya Fay? That's good. She's not the kind of person to be tempted by material gain. And she certainly wouldn't help you if anything were to happen to her cousin. Ugh. Or maybe you'd like to go ask the Queen of Crayon to channel the founder for you. He could, but he'd probably get executed for requesting such a thing. It's over. Now confess, you killed Dr. Buff, didn't you? Wasn't supposed to end this way. Guys and Wimperson, are you admitting to committing the crime? The judge is completely disregarding this talk about him fucking kidnapping my fay. It's true that I'm your lawyer, and as such, it's my job to defend you. However, defending my client isn't the only duty a lawyer has. There's something else that's equally as important. And that is finding the truth. What? Mr. Addison Wimperson, you have sought to twist the truth in the dirtiest of ways. I was complicit in your hostage taking, but in a way I was being held hostage too. Even so, there is still hope for me to make things right. And I owe it to all of you. I owe it all to you, Apollo. <clears throat> Can't allow murder to walk away scot free. Therefore, Mr. Addison Wimperson, must resign you as your attorney. Does this mean I'm under arrest? Ah! <sighs> well. I have nothing to confess. What? I said I have nothing to confess. I don't and I don't want, especially not to a plebeian like you. Besides, there is no truth to all these allegations. I mean, look at the suitcase. You won't find a single print of mine on it. Yeah, so what? 
All that means is you wiped them off, taking care to only leave Mr. Our balls. Heh <laughs> as many a great politician has said before me, no comment. In that case, try switching things up, Apollo. Look at the situation from a different angle. There's really nothing that points to the suitcase being dropped from above. Mm, evidence that points to the suitcase being dropped from the second floor. Yeah, her statement, because... She said she was putting it away, and if she was there, then it wouldn't be good if she was... Whoops. Uh. Oh, wait, I'm not at the thing yet. Ah, now it would place them right around here. Maybe, just maybe. Thought of something, Apollo. Leave this piece of evidence to be connected to dropping the suitcase. Take that! It appears to be a statement. How is it related to this case? On the night of the murder, your know, Miss Army Buff physically left her room. That's when she saw the doctor burning the orb and subsequently passed out. Right above the coffee bar. But with her and there in the, her wheelchair, the killer wouldn't have been able to drop the suitcase down onto the doctor. Good point. However, according to Sarge, he woke up just as someone was trying to move her in her wheelchair. Thanks for the flashback, that was totally necessary, even though you already explained the full extent of it. He must have been in the killer's way and had to be moved. Isn't that right? When if the killer had pushed a wheelchair with his bare hands, we may yet find the conclusive evidence we need. Exactly. Fortunately for us, that evidence slipped right through the killer's fingers. If only he'd been able to hold on to it just a little longer. But now he's neither able to discord nor alter it. Discard nor alter it. Honestly, that piece of evidence wasn't even supposed to be here in this courtroom today, and yet, it looks like sometimes things do get better. Dust that shit for prints. My effect. Take that. On the night of the murder, Sarge passed out, only to come to uh, come and to find that someone was pushing her wheelchair. That's when she flipped back into her room. Didn't physically see a single soul after that. Should have presented Ema Sky. <laughs> Not until Athena drew her out through that therapy session. That is. While the killer was able to wipe the prints on the suitcase, the same can't be set for the prints that got away. Well, Miss Paul Addison Whipperson, try to explain your way out of this one. to have a villainous spray down. Well, this was yet another unexpected turn of events. 
In light of everything that's been revealed, it seems the relic is indeed the Founder's Orb. And it seems Mr. Paul Addison Wimperson can be considered a suspect in Dr. Buff's murder. Apollo, I want to thank you for everything. Ugh. Thanks to you, I didn't have, didn't have to keep bending the truth. I don't know what I would have done without you. Ah, uh, don't mention it, man. You were amazing today, Apollo. Oops, I dropped my 3DS. Well, I couldn't have done it without Dirk. Those two sentences he said were really fucking something. A Thanks for flashing back eats. to this and not letting me skip it. Uh. <sighs> <sighs> As it seems, both sides have no further objections. With Dirk Shit Marty, please take the stand. Escort awards your with the divine dragons for state of transfer agreement. <laughs> Good the kingdom of crayon claim ownership. The matter may have to be deliberated in court all over again. I just hope or shall not pray it. I am not the judge for signing over that one. Ha ha ha. I like that might spark an international instant. Still, there are bigger and more momentous things there to stir in the air. The revolution. <laughs> Escort is adjourned. Can I please stop playing this game now? Nice work, son. Finally broke through the last obstacle on the road to revolution. Revolution? Huh. Oh, we think you actually defeated a fighting phoenix. All I can say is that's my boy. Oh, Mr. Wright did have his hands tied. Who knows if I'd have one that would have been able to fight me at all. See it more like you're safe, Mr. Wright. Uh, save the mom of God. Hey, remember what he said? Here's a flashback. You didn't have to bend the truth anymore. Well, oh, thanks to you. Oh my God, we didn't get a flashback. Amazing. Um, uh, Mr. Dirk, now that the Holy Mother's face has been revealed, are you going to have a spirit meeting try channeling her? I, for one, would love to see a return of the legendary founder. Yeah, just think about it. Being able to speak to someone right out of the history books. No flashback. I feel cheated. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. What? Why? Space isn't enough. You also need the true name. Oh, right. Pearl mentioned something like that. The founder's true name is only known to the priestess who has been crowned queen. In short, the only living person who knows it is the current queen of Crayon. Oh, so without her help, we won't be seeing the founder anytime soon. Tusk. That's no fun. So, Dirk, what will you do now? First, I'll start by tracing the route by which the orb came into Dr. Buff's hands. Since we now know it was Paul Addison that asked the doctor to study it, isn't he the one who stole it? Nah, politician nobody like him couldn't get anywhere near the orb, let alone steal it. Must have had inside help. My money is on someone connected to the royal family. You're right, you said something to that effect back up in the cave. Wherever it may be, we need to expose their dirty scheme to the light of day. Well, I'm sure Mr. Wright has plenty of information courtesy of his dirty client. He might be able to shed some light on this. Private Justice. That's fine work you did at the trial today. Back at you to great courage to leave your room like that. It's all thanks to you and Krupp's Woven Sykes. I see the defense over, I can finally sally forth. 
Battle's only just begun. Run for me and me alone to fight. <sighs> oh, Joseph, I've been thinking. It's about time I stood on my own two feet. After all, the long iron pup to coodle me, coddle me. Huh? I'm afraid I don't follow. Take a good look, soldier. This is one small step for man. One giant leap for me. Oh, my drum for you, would you? Is she just gonna miraculously heal her legs like fucking Jesus or some shit? Yep, she is. Here we go. Jesus. Boss. You can stand on your legs again. And then she gets violently shot at, and the, the window explodes, and then her arm gets dislocated. And Apollo needs to relocate it, and he says, Do it yourself next time. It's a miracle. Doctor told me I was ready to walk again months ago. If I admitted I could walk, I knew I'd have to leave the house. So I faked it. Makes sense, but... Kept pretending I couldn't walk, but I know Papa is watching over me now, and I'd hate to disappoint him. And also, this game doesn't know about muscles, and that they, like, deteriorate, and she probably wouldn't be able to stand if she's been wheel wheelchair-bound, like, forever. Whatever. So, from this day forth, I'm going to march forward on my own two feet. What a brave kid. I guess. Don't you ever stop, just keep on walking. Especially when the police come after you, then you should walk like really fast and far away. Well, she probably walked when she was in her room privately, I guess. <laughs> Doubt it. Hey, Dad is back. Hello, Daddy. Dots. That's right. Where's Maya? Oh, Paulo. Uh, is everything alright, Miss Miss Faye? She's safe for now. Well, then we better go save her quick. Where is she, anyway? In crayon or something. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Maya's not here in the States. She's still in crayon. And she's still being held hostage by the mastermind behind this whole thing. Mastermind? That's right. All Addison Winterson was nothing more than a pawn. My two abductors, the kingdom is in the kingdom of Crayon. Who would have ever guessed that? I don't get it, Miss Wright. Why is this game so long? But as unshocking as the news was, it was only the beginning of more. Zero hours was not of the true mastermind. <laughs> Hearn. Begin there's something big, big enough to shake Creon to its very core. Revolution. It's being swept up in a mighty wave that nothing can stop. Of course, at the time, I had no idea what the days ahead had in store for us. Yeah. Well, I guess we have to stream even more of this shit. Good night, everybody.